hey guys and welcome to my channel today in this video we are going to talk about how to use silver fast 9 special edition that comes free with plus tech optic film 8100 now this video is less about how to use that machine it's more about what's in silver fast se plus 9 edition so i'm going to explain you exactly each and every tools almost each and every tools that you need to scan your negative properly so it's going to be a little bit long because it requires a lot of explanation um, i will try my best to time code each section so they can jump back and forth and second thing that i would like to mention which is um, the photo that i'm going to scan as an example should be available in my Flickr and Instagram so go and check it out and subscribe if you want to that would be really nice of you there is a couple of things I would like to mention before I jump into the software so number one always use a gloves especially the cotton one super important trust me you're going to regret it if you don't have one I did and second, if possible, use a microfiber cotton to wipe out all the uh, dust from your film, if possible. Now, this is what I have got six negatives inside that little tray. So as you can clearly see, they're all nice and clean, but there are always a little bit of a, like a micro dust always exist so you kind of have to pay attention to those um, so I'm going to start with one of the image of this um, of this tray and then I'm going to show you exactly how silver first works at least how I use to scan my own negatives so they can pick up some idea out of it now again try your best to dust off as much possible as you can from the negative so Now there is another thing I like to mention which is you can either insert from one side or another doesn't really matter but what is recommended you always put the emulsion on the faded side at the bottom and the shiny side at the top so once you insert the first part you should hear a sound a little click sound you can, you can also feel it so that means it's nice and locked with one single image so once it's done you turn on the silver first it's already on so i'm going to click start now we are in silver first plus tech optic film 8100 version so this is the ac plus so you have two options here so option number one is you can either click the workflow pilot so workflow pilot is for those who just don't want to mess out too much just want to uh, let the software do the job for you so it will guide you one step at a time and you can just do a modification as per your image requirement and it's quite nice and easy and simple to understand and i personally recommend you to use that uh, at the very beginning if things get a little bit confusing because a lot of people don't understand exactly how each of them works or at least it may look a little bit messy so to avoid that kind of confusion go ahead and use the workflow pilot but if you're in the workflow pilot there's a lot of preset but i recommend you to go to edit and edit extensive what is extensive means that it will try to bring as much tools as possible that requires to edit your negative um, there are other little presets there like quick fix repair uh, color restoration black and white which kind of convert um, color to black and white or archive archive is basically it doesn't do any kind of modification it only transform the negative into positive and save it at 848 bit raw version but problem with that it is a big size and you have all the information but 
first of all, is a kind of overkill in my need. And many software may or may not support that format. So you have to be very careful when you're saving it. Now, I'm going to show you my way. What I do, I start from the top. Now, you should go to edit and click preference and do all the necessary changes. Um, different person has different needs, so I don't know what you need, but I highly recommend you to go there and do necessary changes. And then once it's done, immediately I start with the pre-scan. Why I do that is basically, uh, as of now, after that pre-scan, you will be able to know exactly what you're doing. So as you can clearly see, it's uh, it just doing a very quick pre-scan, which is very beautiful. By the way, this photo was taken in Reunion Island on Indian Ocean. I don't know if you're familiar with that little island. And I was shooting photo on a horse, uh, which is kind of um, crazy, I have to say. And the second thing is that this is my first time on a horse. And I was shooting with the Fuji C200. So this film is a Fuji C200 negative with a Canon, I believe, 1000 FN. Really nice and simple uh, camera to use with a good lens though, 70 to 40 mm f4L. Fantastic lens. Now, you did your pre scan. Now, my job is to make sure you are within the frame. So that little red is within the frame so that is very important now you have transparency for the transparency like if you have slides you can use that but we are here for the 35 mm film so i'm going to precise more on that and then as i said 48 bit is unfortunately you cannot do much except just transforming to positive so i'm going to do 48 24 bit so it scans in 48 bit and it downscale to 24 bit crazy enough for me i have to do i don't have to do more than that now once you're done you name it whatever it is let's say horse and you select your file tiff psd jpeg of course uh, for me i always select tiff and in the path, you of course select your folder where you want to save it. Format, typically you have the preset. Format is more about the scan for printing. I always uh, keep it at custom. Then you have the portrait mode or landscape mode. This is a landscape format photo, so I'm going to clip, keep it as it is. Now in the preset, you can select your PPI. So PPI, pixel per inch. DPI is dot per inch. DPI is more important for printing. Um, PPI is more for the screen. So let's just keep it simple as it is. Now, after that, in the resolution slider, you can go as high as you want. You can go to the maximum slider, which will give you as much as 201 megabyte TIFF file. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I don't know why you need it, but I mean, I, 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 I just don't need that much of resolution so i could just bring it down to 2400 you can even manually put in a little box next to the preset like 2000 so i'm gonna manually use the slider to anywhere between 1000 to 1600 typically me like what i do i close the section and the navigator because i don't need it and i jump straight to the picture setting Take a look at the histogram. They all look good. Then I'm going to go to the Megafix, Negafix, my apologies, and select all the, the vendors based on the film. Now, here's the thing. I don't have Fuji C200 in the Negafix. So I found out that closest thing is the Fuji Super HG. Um, it closes to what I would have gotten if I developed it manually. Personally, I don't really care. As long as it's good looking, beautiful, sharp, good color, I'm happy. Uh, I'm a happy boy. Um, so far, so good. But the photo looks a little bit reddish. I like it a bit more warm. So you're going to work on that quickly. 
So as you know, clearly, Negafix where you want to be when you want to select a particular film uh, simulation. That's the word, I think, or preset. Um, but once you put film inside a software, world is your theater, which means that you can do whatever you want. Now I'm going to go to the saturation again and try to add plus three saturation. And after that, I'm going to do a pre-scan one more time. See what it gives me. And the pre-scan is quite fast. I quite like it, to be honest with you. Now it's still looking nice. But it still have a little bit of global red tone, which I'm not liking it. So I'm just, just for the test, I'm going to go to the Kodak vendor and change it to Potra. See what it gives me. And then 400, let's see 160. Not a huge change, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to reduce the tolerance, play with the tolerance, see what it gives me. So if I reduce it, what is happening, the tolerance, essentially it um, affects your highlight. So more you go upward, it bumps the highlight far to the right. When you reduce it, it will try to recover some highlight from the, uh, from the sky or from the most bright area. So I'm going to stop right there. I think I've spent enough time on that section. Now, before I go further down, I would like to say that you have a little bar here. Uh, when you click I is info, it should give you all the information about your image. It's basically the metadata. You can save it if you want to. Then you have the rotate, um, sorry, zoom in and zoom out. But problem is that it's not a problem really. Every time you click zoom, it will re-scan all over again. And it's scanning now. If you can see at the bottom uh, left corner, it's scanning just because I clicked zoom. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. And then after that, you have the rotate and flip. Obviously, it depends on your need. If you want to rotate it, if, it's, if that was not rotated or maybe it was supposed to be a portrait but it's in the landscape format. So you get the idea. So you do rotation and flip with that button. Peep it. Now, pipette is more like a level in Photoshop or even in Curve, I believe, which is you can select your white point, you can select your black point. So that's something to do with the black and white or black and white, what I mean that brightness or contrast. But when it comes to neutral, it's actually, you. let's say you select a neutral point and you're telling the software that this is the... Um, neutral gray or neutral white so if you click it with the dropper it will try to balance the color of the image very important tool now you have the ultra sharp mask unsharp mask sorry um, usually i leave it to auto sharpness which plenty enough for me to bring as much detail as i possibly can um, you can play with it as you like. If you are familiar with the unsharp masking in Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any software that uses um, unsharp masking. What is SRDX? I'm going to click it to show you. SRDX, if your machine or your scanner have unsharp, sorry, the dust scratch removal, this is what you want to use. Unfortunately, Plus Tech 8100 do not have this option, so it's kind of useless for me. But if you are getting the version of Plus Tech that has this option, more than welcome to use it. Very effective. But here's the thing. Apparently, I read somewhere, it's kind of useless also for black and white images, even if the machine provides you that, um, that function. So I'm going to close it. Then... AACO, what the hell is that? So I'm gonna show you. So when I do it, I would like you to pay attention to one thing. First thing first, look at the darkest part of the image right now. And as you do, I'm going to go from low effect to the maximum effect. So here you go, I'm gonna click maximum effect. And you can see that what it's trying to do is trying to bring out as much information as possible from the dark part. Very careful using that preset because it can make your photo make your photo really really weird. 
So I like to keep it to the low effect if possible. Don't go overdo it. Trust me, you will regret it later. Now gain, show gain dialogue. Gain dialogue is basically how much grain you want um, and how much noise you want to reduce. So it's basically a noise reduction, you can call it. Um, let me give an example. I'm going to zoom in one on one. There you go. Now again, remember that every time you click zoom in, zoom out, it will re-scan the whole thing. So it's re-scanning right now as we speak. Now I'd like you to pay attention really well to the to the image. Now I don't know. I wish I could zoom in even more, but I can't. But anyway, so when you click light gain G A N E, it's essentially reduce a uh, grain and noise from the image but without any strong effect medium obviously not a name giveaway it tried to find the balance between too much and too less strong on the other hand it will dramatically reduce all the grain and noise as a result you will lose a detail unfortunately so you have to be extremely careful when you do that i say stick with light gain that's my personal opinion now you got the idea of the grain and noise elimination. Now, what is me? Me. Me is basically multi exposure. So you try to scan the photo about three times. Um, one time underexposed, one time perfectly exposed, third time overexposed, and combine all this scan together to bring as much detail possible from the image. So it's like a, doing a HDR within the image takes a lot of time to um, go through that process if you have the whole role to go through but it's very effective for the images that has uh, that is high contrast trust me so in this case i'm just going to make it full i'm not going to use it but when you click it will give you multi exposure preview is requested but has not uh, it has not enough input images. Do you want to start a new pre-scan now? So I'm gonna say no. So you got the idea of the multiple exposure. You can also take three images of three different um, exposure and then scan them one at a time and manually. Uh, do the HDR in different software or even here using Amy. I mean, you know the bracketing. So you exactly got the idea what it does. Personally, I'm just going to undo it because I don't really need to do that all the time. Now, you got the idea of the bar. Now we are going to go to the auto CCR. Auto CCR basically auto adjust with the color cast removal. It kind of automatically tried to get rid of all the color cast. Again, something that I just click it and move on, move forward. Then you have the histogram. When you have the histogram, it's already on here. You can also manually uh, control your midtone if you would like to. I'm just going to reduce the midtone quite a bit. And you can use the slider. You can either click for the color cast removal automatic or you can use the slider manually if you like to i'm going to close it gradation is basically curve the famous curve so come on i think you know exactly what it does so this one doesn't need a lot of explanation and but what i'm going to do i'm going to add a contrast so when i add contrast pay attention to the curve it is actually moving so it's actually doing the job for you so whatever slider you use your curve is going to move then you can individually select red green and blue to change each color channel if you like to now global cc what is it so it's essentially globally uh, try to get rid of any color cast if there is any in the photo what i'm going to do i'm going to actually add color cast I like it a little bit nice and warm. I mean, I don't know. I have some good relationship with the warmer images. So I'm going to add that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to also go back to the, my curve, select the luminosity and pull down the highlight so that my final image 
can be a little bit less in uh, less clipping in the highlight area but i don't want to do it too much because it will create distortion so you don't want to do it too much now in the selective cc simply selective color correction is exactly same as hsl color correction period uh, so you can e e you can select each color channel for instance i'm going to select red and you can need a slider you can change the hue of the image look at that so you got the idea and then in order to change saturation of that specific color i'm gonna bring it back to zero you have none brighter brighter plus stronger stronger plus double plus weaker dollar warmer let's go for warmer it will make the red a little bit warm if you go for brighter plus it will make the red brighter if you go to the stronger double plus it will make the red super saturated unfortunately you can do one at a time you cannot do multiple let's say you want to make the red brighter and saturated you cannot do both you have to do one or another so that's kind of a downside of this thing what i want to do i want to have my green a little bit saturated so i'm going to make it stronger so with the blue stronger as well and the cyan a little bit stronger and i like it already so you got the idea or you can also cl click acr so automatically fix the saturation so you can do that as well and you can just move on it actually does a very 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 extremely good job i quite like it so you can go for it if you like so i'm gonna go back to the red i think the street looks too red to me it wasn't like that when i was there so i'm gonna make click a dollar see what it gives me yeah that's good enough now let's click scan now i am scanning a 200 dpi image and beam it's already done so if you select a higher quality higher dpi image it will take forever but if you have an image that is 72 to let's say about 600 it should not take too long but looks like um uh, our job is done here i'm just gonna do a quick zoom to see the quality and that's the another image that i've done earlier which gave me a fantastic quality image just love it so i'm gonna go back to the previous one so this is it so that should give you an idea how to use this software as you need if you like this video please like and subscribe and if you have any question please do ask me in the comment section below if you want to have this photo if you want to take a look at this photo with the exact scan that i've just done right now go to my Flickr account and take a look at the image and you can comment there as well and if you have any personal question please do email me directly i'm happy to answer all your question look after yourself love you all Bye-bye.